Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Well, for a change, I'm not out in the vegetable garden today. I'm actually up in my office, and that's because I have some really exciting news to share with you. I have written another book. It's called The Vegetable Garden Problem Solver Handbook. It is from Cool Springs Press, and it will come out in February 2023. This book has been a great deal of work, but it's something I'm very excited about. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I have been vegetable gardening for a very long time. I've learned a lot of things. I've made all the mistakes there are, and I've been puzzled by the weird stuff that can happen in our vegetable gardens, whether it's from the weather, plant diseases, pests in the garden, and so on. I want you to be successful at gardening and not have to go through that huge learning curve. And so that was the point of this book. Now, chances are you already know about my previous book, which is the Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. It came out last year. It has been a bestseller on Amazon for the whole time, and it has consistently gotten five-star ratings from people reviewing the book. So that is pretty cool. And the goal with that book was to make it easy to identify both the bad bugs and the good bugs in your garden and find out what you can do to control the bad guys by using organic methods, products, and strategies. So with this new book, The Vegetable Garden Problem Solver Handbook, I take the same approach. I want to make it easy for you to recognize disease problems, things that are caused maybe by the weather or by something that we accidentally did or didn't do, and dealing with pests in the garden. So what I'm going to do today is give you a sneak peek inside the book so you can see what's in there and you know what to expect. So here's the cover of the new book. And I have to tell you, I put a green border around it just to help the cover stand out a little better on the computer screen. But the title, again, is The Vegetable Garden Problem Solver Handbook. And you'll notice that the subtitle is Identify and Manage Diseases and Other Common Problems on Edible Plants. So I'm talking about weird things that are usually weather-related that cause things like cracking in tomato fruits or perhaps nutrient deficiencies that can cause something like chlorosis in a watermelon leaf, or dealing with critters in the garden, things like those rascally rabbits, or different types of plant diseases that really can make us scratch our heads and feel very discouraged. Now, as you can probably guess, the book has not been printed yet. That will come in a few months. So what I'm going to show you today is what is known in the publishing world as the BLAD, and that stands for Book Layout and Design. What happens is when an author writes a manuscript, the art department at the publisher comes up with a look and a feel for the design of the book, and that is what we sort of tweak a little bit over a few months to come up with a really pleasing and well laid out design. So I'm going to take you through a few pages of it and that way you'll know exactly what's going to be in the book. Let's start out with the table of contents. So you can see here's chapters 1, 2, and 3. We'll focus on chapter 1 first. And what I do is I start out by giving you my best tips for being successful at growing your own vegetables. So things like Picking the right location, spacing your plants appropriately, giving them support so that they grow well, giving them the right amount of water, how to feed your soil because it will in turn feed your plants, and that also covers a discussion on composting. I also talk about fertilizers to use, the importance of monitoring your garden, and using organic practices because, hey, you're going to be eating that food. You don't want any chemicals on those veggies. From that point, I go into troubleshooting the different types of issues that might come your way. It might be as a result of watering too much or not enough, 
giving your plants the wrong type of fertilizer, problems with seeds germinating or not, problems with flowers not getting pollinated, different types of weather-related issues. So that could be things like heat waves or frost. Then I discuss what herbicide damage looks like on your plants, what to do about it and how to prevent it. And then physiological disorders. You know, a lot of folks aren't familiar with that term. Sometimes it's also called abiotic disorders. And these are things that are not caused by diseases. It's more by either the weather or something that we might have done or not have done for our vegetable plants while they were growing and developing. So this includes things like fruits that are bitter, blossom drop, bolting to seed, buttoning, cracking fruit, misshapen fruits, physiological leaf roll, sunburn or leaf scorch, sun scald, and tomato cat facing. All of these things are so useful for a gardener and it helps us understand what can bring on these problems and how to prevent them in the future. Okay, now let's look at chapter two. This is the vegetable plant disease guide and it is truly the meat of the book. Now, if you have my previous book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook, you know that chapter two was the meat of that book because that's where I had all of the photos of the different types of insects you might encounter in your garden and ways to easily recognize them to understand what damage the different types of bugs do and so on. So in this book, I did so much research about vegetable plant diseases. I want to make it easy or at least easier for you to recognize the different types of vegetable plant diseases you might encounter, what causes them, and all kinds of methods for dealing with them and preventing them from happening in the future. So what I did, and I'll show you this in a moment, is I started out with a vegetable crops and potential diseases problem chart. And that chart will point you to the different types of disease profiles that are in this book. So we're talking about allium white rot, alternaria leaf spot, anthracnose, bacterial blight, bacterial leaf spot, bacterial soft rot, bacterial wilt, beet curly top virus, black rot, buckeye rot, cercospora leaf spot, corn smut, damping off disease, early blight, fusarium wilt, gray mold, late blight, downy mildew, powdery mildew, mosaic virus, potato scab, rust, septoria leaf spot, sooty mold, southern blight, tobacco mosaic virus, tomato spotted wilt virus, verticillium wilt, and white mold. Wow, that is a lot of diseases, but you're going to find a wealth of information about them and helpful photos. Okay, now let's focus on chapter three, critters in the garden. If you have birds and animals that love your vegetable crops as much as you do and you're feeling really frustrated about how to keep them out of your garden, I have a wealth of information for you. So the types of critters that I cover in this book are birds, chipmunks, deer, gophers, groundhogs, which are also known as woodchucks and marmots, mice, moles, opossums, porcupines, rabbits, raccoons, rats, skunks, tree squirrels, and voles. So yeah, that is a lot of critters. And there are so many interesting things you can do, all kinds of strategies and methods that will help keep them away from your garden. In the back of the book, there are resources to help you further locate information on the topics within the book. There is a list of product suppliers for some of the different types of tools and products that I mention in the book. There's information about me and my chance to acknowledge all the wonderful people who helped me put this book together. And then an index, of course. 
Now let's quickly look at a few specifics so you understand what you're going to see in the book. So this is the start of chapter one. There are over 200 photos in this book, which will help you identify problems and also give you a little bit of visual inspiration for growing your own veggies. And so in this chapter, I talk about the types of things that you can do in your garden to keep your plants healthy and how to troubleshoot the types of problems that come up that are not diseases. So again, those physiological disorders, germination issues, pollination issues, weather related issues, and so on. If I move ahead, you can see here's an example of information about pollination issues. And I show you what the male and female flowers of squash plants look like and how to hand pollinate them if you have a pollination issue. Here's an example of a physiological disorder that probably everybody has dealt with, and that is blossom end rot. Isn't that ugly? So this is on tomatoes. This is on zucchini squash. And it is not something caused by a disease. It is a lack of calcium within the plant, which the different developing fruits need in order to fully mature you'll be interested to learn what actually causes this, and it is quite easy to prevent. Now in chapter two, just like in the Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook, I made a massive chart that will help you narrow down and identify the different types of diseases that may be affecting your plants. Hopefully you will have very few problems or no problems. That would be really nice. But what I did is this chart lists the different most commonly grown vegetable crops, which plant family they belong to, descriptions of the types of damage you might see on the plants that are caused by diseases, and then the possible disease that is causing the problem. These are all the disease profiles that you'll go to to see pictures of what the disease does to plants and how to deal with them. Here's another page of that chart. And the chart goes on for pages and pages because I wanted to really help you narrow down what you're dealing with. Now here is a disease profile. This is beet curly top virus. This is something where the beet leafhopper is the insect vector for the disease. And so within a disease profile, I give you a description of it, whether it is viral, fungal, or bacterial, which virus, fungus, or bacteria causes the disease, which crops are most commonly impacted by them, what to look for, and in some cases, because it manifests differently within the different types of vegetable crops, I narrow down what it looks like on those crops. And then here on the right are all kinds of organic strategies for dealing with it and preventing it. Here's another one. Everybody's familiar with this one, powdery mildew, and what it looks like on a squash plant. Also a photo of what is not powdery mildew, it's just natural coloration on the leaves of certain types of squash plants. So this can fool you into thinking you've got powdery mildew and you don't. So same thing, it's a fungal disease. What causes it? A description of what it looks like on the plant, which crops are most commonly impacted by it, signs to look for, and organic strategies. In chapter three, I talk about the critters. And so here's an example of a critter profile. Many of you who follow me know that we deal with California quail. We love watching them, but they can really cause a lot of problems, especially with young seedlings and lettuce plants. So I have a description of the, the problem and the critter. 
not specifically just California quail, but birds in general, signs of their activity, which plants tend to be birds' favorites, ways to control and strategize, and with birds, I listed a whole lot of things that you can do. Here's some pictures of the damage. Here's one of my famous toy snakes that I use to scare birds away. And let me just go to the next page here. So you'll notice in the strategies I've got, here's how you can scare them, which might sound kind of mean, but it works well. And here's how you can exclude them with barriers. So that is the whole blad for now. So I could show you what's in the book. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Vegetable Garden Problem Solver Handbook will not be out until February 2023. But would you believe Amazon is already taking pre-orders for it? Yes, they are. So I'm going to put a link to the book on the screen and also in the description for this video if you're watching it on YouTube. Now, as an added incentive for pre-ordering my book, I have written some bonus material that you will not find anywhere else and it is about 12 vegetable crops that you should add to your garden. You know, we all have our favorites like tomatoes and zucchini and corn, but in this bonus material, I have written about some wonderful crops that you should definitely make space for in your garden. It has all kinds of tips on growing them and some interesting things that you might not know about them. So all you have to do is pre-order the book on Amazon and then forward to me your order confirmation and what I will do is send you a link to the bonus content. I hope you're just as excited about this new book as I am and I'll keep you posted on it. Thanks so much for watching today everybody. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening!